Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon, everybody. It's my uh, honor today to present our dear Glaucoma Division Chairman, Dr. Conrad Shargil Balaxios. Dr. Conrad is a chairman of Glaucoma Division in Kekash. He's an adjunct assistant professor of Al Faisal University in Riyadh. He's a uh, fellowship member of the uh, European Board of Ophthalmology. Dr. Conrad uh, started his medical school in biomedicine uh, studies in Concordia University in Montreal, Quebec, in Canada. Then he moved to University of Monterey, uh, New Orleans, Mexico. And lately he graduated from University of uh, Los Angeles, Merida, in Venezuela. Dr. Conrad did his specialty of uh, ophthalmology in Central University in Venezuela, Caracas. Uh, he holds uh, three ophthalmology subspecialty, glaucoma, anterior segment, and retina uh, from University Hospital in San Juan de Alcante in Spain. Uh, in our lecture today, we'll answer the question why the angle becomes so important. Uh, in glaucoma, as you know, uh, we've been treating our glaucoma patient uh, with conventional treatment uh, method, medically and surgically. But lately, the surgical way of treatment changed since we start to include the anterior, anterior chamber uh, angle in our surgical option. Today, uh, Dr. Conrad, thankfully, he will uh, shed a light on the important role of anterior chamber angle in glaucoma management and how it changed our way of managing glaucoma patients. Please welcome with me, Dr. Uh, Conrad. Uh, welcome, Dr. Conrad. Thank you, Naif. Thank you for such a nice presentation. Is my, my slides are seen properly? It is, yes. Thank you, thank you. Well, as uh, my good colleague, Dr. Naif uh, said, I'm gonna try to give you a pictures on, on, on why the angle it's becoming so popular now. But before we set this as an area, uh, Before we set this as a scenario, I, I, I think I should mention uh, how we get to this point by making a quick view on the uh, history of uh, the discoveries of the glaucoma. Glaucosis was a, a very ancient term related to the green color that the pupil was taken in those elderly, elderly patients that got the, the glaucoma disease. Uh, this subject passioned uh, a lot of the researchers and, and since the early 19th century, we start looking for the, the physiology anatomy of the aquasumor and the outflow ways that it has. Also the discoveries of the um, technology in order to be able to study the angle became popular in the beginning of, at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, when optical devices were, were more available. One of those uh, still being unused, like for example, the Kerber lens that is used with the slit lamp, is, it was one of the uh, tools mainly used for uh, surgery and study of the uh, angling the congenital glaucoma. Goldman also uh, um, designed the three mirror lens that has still been one of the main tools today in our clinic. And regarding the surgeries, the first glaucoma surgery register was by von Grafe in Germany, and it was the iridectomy, 19th century. And he thought that this surgery could be used in all type of glaucoma. From then on, we have the evolution and one of our key tools today, the trabeculectomy is with us since 1968. So it's more than 50 years that it has been with us. Uh, DS, deep sclerectomy, rounds around that time. Angular surgery was from the 19th century and it was done by Barkan for uh, congenital glaucoma but it did not evolve at the same speed due to the lack of resources uh, regarding microscopes and lens. When we talk about the anatomy and physiology of the angle, this is a very particular area. It is an area in which coincide uh, three different tissues, tissues that are involved in the, as the retina and the optic nerve, the neurological area or the accommodation system 
or areas that are uh, uh, ruling the regulation of the light, like the iris diaphragm. Also the protection area of the eye, like lacrimal system and eyelids. And that's why Benninghoff, a schematic uh, diagram, uh, described the angle as one of the most complex areas of the eye. And it has the particular issue that it cannot be seen directly due to the critical angle that the cornea has, optical property. And only in a very limited cases like this kit uh, from KCASH that has a huge keratoglobus, it allows us to see directly the structures of the angle. Thanks to the Dr. Asa Maccabi that passed me a beautiful histological pictures we can uh, have a vision of this uh, angular area in which we can divide in two sections. One is the non-filtration area, and the other one is the filtration area that is uh, mainly occupied by the Schlem canal. And this filtration area uh, can be seen uh, during the surgery, especially after the decompression of the eye, when there is a good blood reflux that will uh, invade all the Schlem canal. And we are uh, using this uh, reflux as the mark for uh, our surgeries, which we will talk a little bit later on. When we talk about the Schlem, the, the trabecular area in particular, it's it, the 75% of the resistance to the outflow of the aquasumor come from the trabecular meshwork. And uh, around 25% of the rest of this resistance come from the areas behind the Schlem canal. So it works as a regulator of the outflow. And this is a way of keeping the balance inside of the anterior chamber by the inflow and production of aquasomore and the, and the outflow of this aquasomore. Till now, we talk about mainly two uh, pathway, the conventional or the trabecular meshwork and the unconventional uveoscleral pathway. But recently, uh, thanks to the use of uh, uh, OC, anterior segment OCTs and angiography, we are able to describe a new pathway, which is the uveolymphatic pathway. Not very well known. We don't know yet how important it is regarding the outflow of the acrosomal. But uh, what we found out after the, this study with anterior segment OCTs and angiography is that these collecting channels are very important uh, for uh, drainage the aquasumor. And in some occasions, especially early stage glaucomas, allow us, if we uh, bypass this, these areas with uh, different devices, we are able to restore the outflow of aquasumor with a, my, a me, less aggressive surgery. But it's also very important to know where the concentration of these uh, channels are. And usually the collecting channels, as you can see, are more uh, located in the nasal superior part of the eye. That is uh, usually our main target when we are doing uh, angular surgery. These drainage routes are very complex, as you can see, are, and are, are all these blood vessels coming from different calipers and different distribution until drainage from mainly uh, Schlem canal into the aqueous uh, veins. And you can see in the surface, if you pay attention, how all this collection of uh, aquasumor fuse into the blood vessels and uh, drain uh, helps for the drainage. But we originally thought that this Schlem canal was just like a, like a inert blood vessels without functions, without movement. Nowadays, we know that it works more like the veins, that it has, uh, it works like a mechanical pump. It has some uh, um, structures that help, help for the contraction of this Schlem canal in order to pump out of the eye the aquasumor. And this uh, pumping system, it's uh, dependent on the pressure and it's modified by different physiological functions. But it's a, a part of this valve are the reason why sometimes we don't see a totally smooth structure 
that full feel of blood during the reflux. And on the contrary, we can see white patches. That means that in that, those areas, the Schlem canal can be a sclerose and then the working system is not that good. As I was explaining, this pumping system, it's also related to some physiological uh, function like eye movement or blinking. And this will give us the explanation why in some occasions we're able to see uh, small pools of the, of the lacrimal tears, small pools during the Goldman aplanation tonometry that is related precisely to the fluctuation of the pressure caused by this pumping system. When we talk about the pathological changes that are characteristic of uh, or that we can study at the angle system, we all know about, about traumatic uh, damage of the angle. But when, when we analyze this carefully, this, this damage in the, in the angular structure like this case, that was a kid 13 years old that came from, uh, from a region, I think Taif, and receive a ocular trauma repair in, the, in that hospital, but it came with a hypotony. And we were able to detect a very important ciliary body detachment that uh, the only way of, of solving it was like reattach the ciliary body back to the sclera by suturing as you are seeing in this uh, movie or after using a um, cryotherapy in order to attach that ciliary body. Of course, these are not standard surgeries, are surgeries in order to, to try to reshape, rebalance the, the physiological production of aqueous humor with the uh, outflow of this aqueous humor, which is going to warrant that the eye will keep the pressure. Because if the pressure is not stabilized and it can take some time to stabilize, it will produce edema, edema of the macula with a decrease of the vision, edema of the optic nerve. With, a, with a consequences of that. Some of the structural changes that we can find in the angle are related to the primary open angle glaucoma, which, which mainly is a disease uh, related to the age. And uh, this disease related to the age and also come with some changes uh, in the, in the um, accommodative system, which cause the presbyopia. The main changes that we are gonna find in the trabecular meshwork are related to, to the loss of elasticity of the tendons of the ciliary muscles. That's why we have the presbyopia, but also enlargement and thickening of the sheets of the elastic fibers. And um, this enlargement of the sheets, it's called the, the derivative plaques that it can be seen in another types of glaucomas. So mainly extracellular matrix that will accumulate there, uh, the collapse uh, of the trabecular lamella that will explain why the uh, aqueous humor has difficulties to, to drain out of the eye. The esteroid induced glaucoma has a similar changes, but uh, mainly what it happens is that uh, it will be a deposit of material underneath of the inner wall of the endothelium. Also the, the uh, extracellular matrix and some of the proteins that are uh, similar, like the collagen, will block this trabecular meshwork. The pigmentary glaucoma, it has another different changes, and we all have seen this pigmentary deposit in the endothelium forming the Krukenberg, Krukenberg uh, spindle. And this pigment will deposit in the trabecular meshwork cells, and it will uh, 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 produce a loss of these cells. Uh, Different uh, physiopathological changes occur in those glaucomas that has uh, um, narrow angles. And mainly this rubbering of the iris against the cornea in the periphery that will produce this ididotrabecular contact uh, will develop some changes, that changes that as they become chronic will affect the drainage and will damage the, the um, trabecular meshwork uh, drainage system. We can see that in neovascular glaucomas, there are some attachment that will produce this synechias, and this is the causes why the drainage and the increase of the, the drainage is failed and the pressure increases. This uh, amazing histological uh, 
photos that I really appreciate from Dr. Asa Maktabi that passed me. When we talk about this distribution of, of synechias, we know that in most of the patient in which there is an increase of pressure related to angular closure, there is a broad and wide distribution of these peripheral anterior synechias. And these are common and damaging because of the contact, prolonged contact uh, in time between the iris and the uh, cornea in that particular area. The larger the stension and the larger the width of these peripheral anterior synechias, the higher the intraocular pressure we're going to have. And uh, as we probably all have seen in the clinic, we are able to detect different areas and uh, the angle is quite, quite flexible that in some occasions having like 220 degrees of occlusion, the angle is capable of drainage in, those, in the area that uh, remains open. It, it is enough to drainage, enough across more to balance that level of pressure. Today we can, with different devices, but we are able to measure the opening of the angle not only by, by gonioscopy, but also by anterior segment uh, imagines. When we talk about the glaucoma approach, we have a different surgeries, different surgeries that will adapt to the type of glaucoma, to the defect that we have in the angle and to the evolution of the glaucoma. That's why staging of the disease is very important. Not only the type of glaucoma, but the, the stage of the disease, because according to that, we nowadays know what kind of surgery we can do according to the level of pressure we are uh, reaching as a goal. The first steps of the treatment, usually it's related to the medication and even the, the use of some selected laser trabeculoplasty can, can are approved but most of the uh, glaucoma societies worldwide and they are allowing us to, to control the pressure for, for a period. This is my steps. I, I really prefer to try to talk, think that I can, if I detect the glaucoma in an early stage, I'm able to use different techniques, techniques that can be uh, move up and down in that step according to the severity of the disease. I always prefer to go from the less aggressive procedure to the more aggressive in order to preserve the tissue. Remember that our worst enemy in glaucoma surgery is the healing process. The trabeculectomy has shown for since more than 50 years that is able to control the pressure in 75% of the population, but 50% uh, of these patients will still evolve into the blindness. And of course, it has a large list of, of uh, possible complications. That's why the deep sclerectomy got such a large amount of popularity in some countries in which we, uh, like Andre Mermo uh, presenting this paper, show a good control of pressure at 10 years with a lower rate of complication. Also, the deep sclerectomy taught us uh, about the uh, anatomy of that part seen from the outside in. But as it, it was not perfect, it forced us to look for some other filtration surgery like this uh, gold shot uh, described by Gabriel Simon in Madrid, but it's based on an old surgery of the 19th century using a manganese implant that, that it's called the troncoso uh, implant. Uh, after using, uh, in some of the cases, uh, and trying to abort the supracoroidal uh, space, uh, this technique did not show uh, a good efficacy or a safety profile. And as you can imagine, a goal implant, it's quite expensive. So the tubes and trap study show us that the tubes were uh, a little bit better better regarding the, the rate of reintervention comparing with the trabeculectomy, but here in Saudi Arabia, and as we think in Europe, it's, it sounds a little bit crazy to go right away for a tube implantation, uh, even if we compare the three main techniques, deep sclerectomy, uh, trabeculectomy, and tubes, the rate of complication, uh, it, of course, is less uh, with the deep sclerectomy, 
after the tubes and the, the one that has more complications is the trabeculectomy. And these are the new evolution of the tube. This is the polling plan that we recently have here in KCash. That is a very clever concept. Concept that is based, is a non-valve tube and uh, it's based only on, on increasing resistance by decreasing diameter of the tube. So it's uh, the concepts of resistance by pipe but bypassing the angle, it's, it's very up to date. And when these surgeries are useful, it's precisely when we don't have a good angular system working. Our worst enemy, as I mentioned, is the, uh, the healing process, specifically in the conjunctiva. That's why uh, nowadays we have a lot of things that we can use in a different phase of the process, like in the inflammatory process, the, the esteroids and the non-esteroidal medication in the proliferative phase, we all know the, the, the mitomycin C and 5-FU, but there is a lot of other subst substance that are being under a study in order to, to reduce the proliferation phase and the remodeling phase. Also the angle is, uh, and the trabecular measure, it's, it's a target for medication to control the pressure. And we uh, start having some uh, rokinase inhibitors already commercialized and you can see in this slide that there is a lot of clinical trials register precisely for uh, uh, exploring these new uh, pharmacological ways of controlling the pressure. Uh, most of the European of the uh, glaucoma societies, including the European Glaucoma Society, in the last edition of their guidelines, talks about the general principles for incisional surgeries uh, as uh, the gold standard. But we are not uh, letting in aside our angular surgery. And you probably have heard about the microinvasive glaucoma surgery, which has the characteristic of being usually an up internal. There are some techniques that are up external approach, minimal traumatic. It should be efficacious, use, at least if you had a target of reduction of pressure, like 30 to 40%. It's, it has an extremely high safety profile, especially if you compare with some other techniques, and the recovery of the patients are quite similar to the cataract one. We have all these toys right now, except the supracoroidals, and I will mention a little bit why it happens. But as you can see, most of the toys are uh, related to the trabecular area, and there is two very powerful tools that are the subconjunctival, the shen, and the pressure flow. When we are talking about angular surgery, the first part starts at the clinic. And we have to look for angle similarities because the, the, the way the angle look and the, the Swam Jacobs uh, lens, for example, in the OR is not exactly the same as we can see in the, the clinic. And the first thing is looking for the landmark, landmarks like the scleral spore and the trabecular meshwork. And the trabecular meshwork, you're gonna see it in the OR after the decompression of the, of the eye by the reflux. The reflux is today probably one of the most important uh, signs when you are deciding to do an angular surgery. We have studies on the dilation of the Schlem canal. Uh, with the early generation of the, of the uh, devices. And for example, in this beautiful paper in which the adding of eye stents reduced the pressure, but among, even if you were adding one, two, three, four eye stents, it was a decrease of pressure, but never was as much as the total removal of the trabecular measure that was having a 50% reduction of the pressure. These early studies, the studies that are from 2004, were what it opens the gate for uh, most of these devices. There are some pronostic factors like high pressure is not a good uh, uh, pressure uh, pronostic factor for using angular surgery. Pressures around 35, 40 could be, could work. The ideal is pressure ar around 30 or lower. And usually this level of pressure goes with this picture of the reflux. When there is no reflux at all, usually pressure is high 
and angular surgeries are not going to work. It's better to move into the filtration surgeries and tube surgeries that I mentioned before. Sometimes you can find that there is patches of blood and patches white. Well, if you're looking to use any uh, bypass, the, the areas of blood are the ones you must target. And in some occasions you can have this fully uh, uh, um, complete of blood uh, Schlem canal that is the ideal. Uh, in this video, you can we can use some of the maneuvers in order to have a good perspective. We can do angular surgery in topical anesthesia or if the eye is totally frozen by the peribulbar anesthesia, you can pull the eye, use the visco distension in order to, to look for this beautiful, completely full of blood Schlem canal. That is a good angle for work in angular surgery. With the early generation of, for example, the eye stand, the GTS 100, like this one that you are seeing in the movie, we were able to uh, cause some iridodialysis, iridodialysis that uh, did not cause many problems. But uh, the issue with this device was that the movement to implant it was sometimes not that easy. So after this first generation, the evolution for the, the second bypass was the injected. And this is a, a nice video that I had from, from Spain in which I was working in, in giving some recommendation on the, on the injector. And uh, you are gonna say, uh, this was one of the good signs. I mean, you put the, the implant in the area full of blood and you have to had this reflux coming into the anterior chamber. Usually it doesn't go with a large hyphema. Next day, this is totally clean. You can see here that when I implant the second one and I was checking, I saw something shining in the anterior chamber that I thought it was a third uh, implant that was not in position. I was able to remove it and uh, send it to, to analyze what, what that was. I thought it was a piece of the injector and surprisingly, it was a dried liquid, uh, more similar to the human mucus. So probably something from, from the conjunctiva that, I, that was captured by the injector and went inside. But the, the properties really looks like shining metal inside of the eye. This is the last uh, generation of this bypass that is called the injected Y, W, because it's, uh, it's wider. And uh, that allows that the implant remains in the right position. Most of these angular surgeries uh, goes good with the cataract surgery. We know that cataract surgery reduce two to four millimeters of mercury, the pressure. But remember that cataract surgery is not a glaucoma surgery, except if it's uh, related to a, to a close angle, as I uh, explained before. Uh, by combination of the cataract surgery allows the opening of the angle. So we have a better perspective of the anatomical area that we need. So implantation is usually uh, more successful. And uh, this kind of surgery only will extend a cataract surgery by a by few minutes. We know that this decrease of pressure related just to the cataract surgery itself is because in normal eyes, uh, uh, removing the cataract will expand the Schlem canal. And it seems that the explanation, uh, expansion of the uh, Schlem canal goes related to the, to the decrease of pressure that it's gonna, it's gonna have. This is another uh, device. Recently, Avantis has been bought by Alcon. So probably Alcon is gonna make a strong commercial pushing for using this device. Uh, I don't have a video on this, but my colleagues from Madrid, Dr. Martinez de la Casa, uh, sent me this one. Uh, he has a lot of experience on, on these angular surgeries too. And as you can see, it's a very long device. It's a device that has the, the idea of expand the Schlem Canal three hours. But uh, what I can say about this, just based on my experience with all the techniques is that 
if uh, if putting two stands was difficult, especially the GTS 100, this one that is a lot, a lot longer, when something, when you are not able to implant it fully, like in this picture, uh, I think that it's going to be a real marron to solve. Marron means difficult case to solve. When we are talking about angular surgery, and as I mentioned before, it usually it's a combination with the cataract surgery, we must think that the cataract surgery is only one step of that surgery. So we finish, we have to be very careful in trying to finish that cataract surgery in the best way possible, because if we have a complication, a PCR, that it can be simple solved, it will jeopardize the outcome of our angular surgery. And the design of the our uh, uh, incisions must go with the type of surgery we're planning to do. Uh, always the incisions should be arranged in order to make it easy, like in this case of uh, ABIC, ABIC is ab internal canaloplasty, in which we introduce a, a probe inside of the Schlem canal. And the idea mainly is to uh, inject uh, heavy viscosity like Helon, Helon GV, Helon Pro uh, to, to expand the Schlem canal. And uh, usually the expansion of the Schlem canal, it's like three or four times its shapes. Uh, it seems that this expansion of the Schlem canal as the previous studies that I show, uh, uh, what it does is decrease um, the pressure if the collecting channel behinds are also working. Sometimes, of course, as we have the reflux, we have a lot of uh, blood coming in the anterior chamber and that makes the view quite difficult. But as I said, this is an excellent uh, sign. If there is blood, the only thing we have to think is, okay, how can I improve my visualization of the surgery? It's always as a, as a golden uh, rule, we have to keep a very good observation of what we are doing. So if you have blood, take the time to wash out in order to be able to, to, to watch what you are doing. Some of the techniques like the, the travecul uh, external trabeculectomy done by this double, dual blade uh, knife, the Kahook dual blade. As I show you in the previous studies, the removal of the trabecular meshwork, it's uh, one of the the pieces that will reduce the resistance so much that usually the pressure uh, drops also good. Amazingly, even if we have these lab studies, when in the clinical uh, setting, uh, all this trabecular uh, um, removal, like, like this um, trabeculectomy or the 360 trabeculectomy, produce a lot of hyphemas. But the decrease of pressure, as you can see in most of the studies, is, is around 30, 35%. So not only the removal of the trabecular meshwork in the living eye is, is the responsible of keeping the pressure. This was the, the trabectom. Trabectom, we used to have it here in KCash. Uh, the company didn't uh, has uh, the, the, the main thing with the trabectom is is a tip that has electricity and produce at the same time that you are removing the trabecular meshwork, you are also doing a, a cauterization of it. From my perspective, it's very aggressive and uh, the result and long terms, like two, three years, shows that there is a healing process that will avoid that uh, the pressure goes down. And in common all, of all these techniques that has the removal of the trabecular meshwork, the high FEMA is the, is the most evident sign the next day. And uh, we are always in these angular surgeries while stuck with the 29, 30, 35% reduction of the pressure. That's why the main indication is usually mild to moderate glaucoma, especially if these patients need uh, cataract surgery too. So Travicton was bought by another company, company that um, has designed some other cutting tools uh, and they are re really willing to uh, be used. The advantage comparing with the Kahook dual blade is that these tips has irrigation. So probably it's gonna allow us to do the 
the trabecular uh, meshwork removal uh, under a better visualization that the CAHOOP has at the present time. Another uh, tool used for angular surgery is the OMI, which is a device. I don't have a video of this. Some of my colleagues are using in, uh, in Spain. Mainly has two functions. You can go for 180 degrees and do a canalization of the Schlem canal and then inject viscoelastic. And if you want to do 360 degrees, you just have to turn the tip to the other side and do the same maneuver. But in some of the cases in which you just want to do uh, uh, 180 degrees or 360 degrees trabeculectomy, it's the same thing. You just insert it and pull it and you're gonna have it. So it seems that it has a potential role in some type of glaucoma in our area, especially some congenital glaucoma, those that are, have no corneal dyshenes yet and allow us to observe the angle. In my experience here, there is not many congenital glaucoma that uh, reach that position. What happens with the uh, supracoroidal devices? Well, the, the CPAS was uh, a device that was also bought by Alcon it is a large piece. Uh, this device uh, in a long-term studies of three years uh, shows that when it was not fully inserted and two out of the three rings um, were outside, has a 20, 25% of endothelial cells count lost. So it was something that, uh, and the management of those insertion was very difficult. You can, once inserted, it's very difficult to remove. So uh, ICATMED uh, designed this cutting tool in order to, to uh, cut uh, the two or three rings that were usually outside. But the other one, the Einstein Supra, that was, uh, uh, belongs to the Glaucos company, they decided not to launch because of this issue. The devices that uh, makes a communication between the anterior chamber and the subconjunctival space, like the Shen, which is a gel uh, device that we also have it here in, at uh, Kcash, uh, well, has the property of, uh, by increasing the, the resistance, by reducing the lumen, you can, you can reach areas like the nasal area, which is in some cases is difficult to, and uh, um, reduce the pressure a lot because you are bypassing the, the angular area and communicating the anterior chamber with the, like, the, like if you were doing a trabeculectomy. Uh, and also this device needs the cares of a trabeculectomy. So uh, one of the main issues now is that it needs needling, needling with the 5FU or mitomycin in order to, to avoid the blockage by the tino. It seems, it seems, and probably we're gonna uh, have this device uh, in the coming month. This is the pressure flow. People it's, uh, in the glaucoma field, it's talking very good about it. It's similar to the Shen with the advantage that we go from outside in. That is an area that we feel more comfortable to work with because it's the area that we were trained to do trabeculectomies and to do uh, DS. So in summary of all these things, uh, the Benninghoff schematic shows the confluence of five system that makes the angle a very complex structure. We are studying every time and more often uh, there are a lot of research regarding this issue. Um, right now we can talk that there is three pathway, but we only know really the, the conventional and the unconventional pathway. Uh, from the pharmacological and from the surgical point of view. The new described the uvio lymphatic pathway, we don't really know how it works on what is the role on IOP control. The aqueous outflow tissue, the formation caused by the normal IOP uh, induced the pulsatile one-way discharge from the aqueous humor into the vascular system. And uh, the angular structure become a target for pharmacological and surgical as the potential IOP reduction, and especially because of the safety profile. So thank you very much again for the participation in this uh, grand round. 
And uh, even if it's a very complex uh, subject, I hope that I cover more or less all of it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Conrad, for this uh, conventional uh, nice presentation. Uh, there is a lot of changes lately in the glaucoma management. As you mentioned, uh, uh, as they uh, discover the angle and rule the angle of treatment, either medically or surgically. Uh, now we can open the floor for any uh, questions. Here a question from Dr. Uh, Sisma. He's asking about your opinion about trabeculotomy and primary congenital glaucoma. <laughs> That's a very good question. And I, I don't know why it doesn't surprise me that Dr. Sesma is asking me this. Well, you know, uh, before coming to KCASH, I probably will say that uh, it was uh, my main option. But uh, it's true that uh, I'm not a real fan of the trabeculectomy because I, I have been trained more as a deep sclerectomy surgeon. And when I came here and I see how uh, the experience in KCASH, it's related to the deep sclerectomy and how well they do and, and the amazing outcomes they had with this DS in, in, in congenital glaucoma, primary or associated to, to dyskinesia, I would prefer to go for a safer, uh, safer surgery than for a trabeculectomy. But unfortunately in glaucoma patients, and as you well know, as a glaucoma guy that you are naive, uh, in all of our patients, will unfortunately need uh, second, third, and fourth options. So uh, the less invasive you can be, the less aggressive you can be, it's leaving a door open for the future treatment of those patients. And in the case of primary congenital glaucoma, the, the younger patients they are, well, we have here these cases of three years old that I, I, I ha we have to implant a tube because already have two filtrations, you know? So I think it has a role, um, but I will leave it as a second option from in my hands, at least. Okay, is uh, Dr. Sisma asking say, yani, if the patient with uh, primary congenital glaucoma has a clear cornea, could you go for trabectome or angle surgery, let's say any natolic uh, trabectome? What? Yes. Is this an option in primary congenital glaucoma with clear cornea? We know that most of our patients here are coming with very, very dense corneal scar, and it's yeah. mostly impossible to, to do angle surgery. But some are, are coming with slightly clear cornea that we can see that some, some, some structure of the angle. Do you think the angle surgery in primary congenital glaucoma is, uh, has a role here? <laughs> You, you ended the question in the best way, it has a role here. In Europe, our first surgery for congenital glaucoma are goniotomies. That's the first surgery. Uh, but here, I think that the congenital glaucoma, it's more aggressive. So I will probably, if I have a clear cornea, I, I will not hesitate, for example, with, the, with, with a gap. Uh, that, up internal uh, trabeculotomy, for example, you know, like uh, catheterization of the angle and having a 360 degrees trabeculectomy. What are, what are the issues here? The problem is, and it's a problem that I suppose based on the uh, anatomical and histological uh, picture that the eyes has when you are doing the DS from outside, you can see that the anatomically, the, the primary congenital glaucoma here do not have an eye uh, that resemble the adult. So you cannot really judge that that angular structure is going to be normal. And I have in some occasions the, the situation of doing a DS and I have done the canaloplasty up sternal and having the obstruction and or limitation uh, of passing from the probe. So I think that the anatomy uh, has is an issue. Uh, I think it could be try if you have those clear cornea cases probably it will be uh, worth it to try uh, 
up internal surgery. Yes. What you can, you, you, what you should forget in these cases are, for example, uh, eye stands, hydros, and all these devices because the anatomy is different. But any yeah. surgery that means cutting or opening, I think it could be work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you see the role of, of MEX? And, uh, you know, our patients are, most of them are complicated cases or advanced glaucoma cases. Do you think MEX uh, is comparable with, with filtration or filtering surgeries? If in, in, the, in the way of management and giving more options, let's say giving more time for the patient, for the surgeon to... Uh, in adults or in kids, you mean? In adults, in adults. Yeah, in, in, adult, in adults, you know, uh, I think that my option will be to go for mix if I have an early stage mild glaucoma. Yes, I will prefer to to move for the mix. What are the advantages of angular surgery in such a cases? Uh, first is that you are leaving the conch untouched. So if that, if those patients will need, you know, DS in the future or a trabeculectomy in the future, you you have the the conch non-touch. Uh, that even if you if you had a moderate to advance and you want to start using the, the nasal area, I think that the best approach for a shent device or even for a pressure flow, it's going into the nasal area and you are preserving 12 hours and temporal side for second options surgery that these patients might need. So yes, I think that it has a rule, a role and that role will depend on uh, on the stage of glaucoma, how advanced the patient comes, and uh, some uh, particular uh, characteristic of the of the case, like open and gold glaucomas, you know, the uh, glaucomas that are uh, related to a different process. Mix has uh, is are not suitable for neovascular glaucoma. I have my doubts about uveitis cases, and you know. But individualize the case. Probably you can you can find the best technique possible. Yeah, here is an, uh, an uh, by Doctor Sisma. He wants to see the yeah is our the, he wants to see the ciliary body reattachment. The video, a nice video you showed it was very nice case where you very well managed and uh, I think you want to to have a look on it on the oh, video. Oh, okay, okay, I, I'm gonna share then the. <laughs> Yeah. The screen again. Uh, let me see how can I do that. Okay, compartiment here, here. Uh, you are seeing now my screen. Yes, yes, it's clear. Uh, okay, let me. Doctor Sesma, dedicated to you. <laughs> this is the location of the of the area because the case, the the amazing thing with the case is that by UBM was uh, large, we couldn't do gonioscopy, and the only way to find uh, the area was by endoscopy. This is the iridodialysis, that is not a big issue, but then I marked this area about three hour, clock hours of uh, totally uh, ciliary body detachment, and he was asking me something about the chances of prolapse of the vitreous, but I didn't have any vitreous, and the only thing is localizing i have the 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 movie longer and uh, it's a very interesting case yes indeed and then uh, the supplementary is by you using the cryo cryo pro uh, 220 degrees around in order to try to create this thick material uh, thick um, uh, scar tissue in that area yeah so this patient, uh, now it's gonna develop, it's developing a cataract related to the trauma, the subcapsular cataract. So I might have to um, do the cataract surgery too. And I'm planning to close the pupil a little bit here because he has some disturbance related to the light. But um, thanks God, the pressure is stabilizing. It remained because the main issue with this kind of um, cyclodialysis of ciliary body detachment is that you attach the ciliary body, but then the side effect is that you are gonna have a glaucoma. So, so far, this is not happening in this case. Uh, again, for Dr. Sesma, before I, here you can see, 
the total detachment, see? It, and yeah. it's in the opposite position, all right? Here, totally whole. And it was only seen by the endoscopy. Here, they reveal the dialysis only, but the, the ciliary body remains attached. So it's a full- Was it thing. possible, doctor, to, to reattach it through uh, suturing from ab interno? Uh... Yes, that is another technique, naive, very, very good observation. The only thing with the ab interno that I have used before is when it's a small area, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, let's say one hour, two hours, but this was about four hours as far as I was able to, to mm. see. See, so I marked it okay, yeah. from, from here to here. That was when I did two incisions. So I was exploring 180 degrees and 180 degrees. And I only was able to find that uh, detachment from here to here. That's why I mark it. But uh, uh, if you had a small one, yes, the, the app internal technique is very good. It's the one I, I used to attach the iris. Uh, yeah. I cut it because of the time. And I think that we have about five minutes. This is going to be the last uh, part that I'm going to show. I'm going to try to stop when we see. Nylon. Yeah. nylon. This is, see, using yeah. the app internal uh, technique yeah. that you mentioned. Yes. Yeah. Here's Dr. Fatma Atia. I think she wants to uh, have a question. Yes, Dr. Fatma, you can. Mark is yours. Ah. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> Hello. Hey, nice, <laughs> to yeah. nice to hear you, Fatima. How are wow. you? Thank you so much for the presentation. Missing being a uh, fellow in glaucoma division. <laughs> Missing you too. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Conrad, I want to ask you about the preserve flow in, the, in our glaucoma, congenital glaucoma patient. What do you think about it? I know the classic management, our classic management of our patients with congenital glaucoma, but would you use it for uh, our patient as, for example, a failed DS or something? You would use preserve flow? Well, I, I'm, I don't have experience, but I will tell you the opinion of people that have used pressure flow uh, uh, in Europe. And many okay. of my colleagues in Europe and Canada that I ask about, they are very happy with the outcome. Uh, from mm -hmm. their perspective, it's much better than the Shen uh, due to the biocompatibility of yeah. the material. So probably, probably the scenario in kids, it could be used. Mm -hmm. It could be used. Yes. Yeah, I, and I, I wouldn't sure. afraid. I, I will not be afraid of dislodging or because I think it's long segments in the uh, conjunctiva on the anterior and the anterior chamber. That's and with the, the growing thing. of the yeah. That's the thing that the but you know probably the the issue will be extrusion or exposure of these devices as it happens uh, with kids. If you see the the valve and tubes has a it's higher ran, range uh, of exposure in kids that in adults. And sometimes it's, re it's uh, related, I believe, to the to the rubbering of the eye, yes. Mm, so it would be the same as the conventional tube. Uh, the only thing is that it's a lot, a lot smaller. The yeah. lumen of the, of the pressure flow is, the internal lumen is 75 microns, so externally it's something like 125. So it's, it's the same diameter that the pollen plant has as a total. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the exposure, you think it will be less, the opportunity? I think so, I think so. yes, yes. Okay. And it could, it so could, would, you, would you use it for pediatric or congenital glaucoma? Well, I can, I can tell you that here I have cases that I, in more than one occasion, I have thought, well, mm -hmm. probably this kid will go better with the pressure flow that with this. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, okay, thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Fatima, for this. Thank you, uh, Dr. Naim. Thank you so sure. much. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Dr. Conrad. I think we can conclude now. We have only like five, four minutes to uh, move to the quiz with Dr. Ariel uh, Bishri. Thank you, Dr. Conrad, for this uh, comprehensive, uh, nice uh, presentation that uh, answers some of questions about the angle rule in glaucoma management and hopefully we are in the, in the era that we will have more option as 
we we usually use have one or two option in the past now we have so many options alhamdulillah this is uh, this is the beauty of science so uh, uh, hope to see you again and talk uh, about uh, what is new in angle surgery and angle management thank you very thank much thank you Nay. thank you for for moderating the session thank you very much it has been a pleasure yes thank you very much thank you all bye bye, bye, -bye.